no cassette, no chain, no derailleur, gearbox, motor unit, all in one. This could be a massive leap in e-bike tech and a massive piece of revolution for the entire industry. This is an integrated motor and gearbox unit. And in this video, I'm gonna do a test and find out what it's all about. So automatically shifts down to gear four. As soon as I stop on this bike, it's programmed to go back to gear four to make it easy to pull away. I'm in the highest power mode. I'm about to do a little climb. It's only a multi-story car park. It's not a proper trail or anything, but should give a good kind of indication as to how it performs. It's pretty punchy from the get-go. I've got auto shift turned on as well. So as I stop pedaling, it automatically shifts the gearbox to make sure I'm in the prime premium kind of range for the pedaling cadence. It just changes back down to gear four without me doing anything. And that is the gear that is easy to start the bike in. Like when I'm at a stop or a traffic light or something, don't need to press anything. Just automatically changes back down to an easy gear. Not one, that's too easy. Four is something that's fine to start off on. And as I'm pedaling, I'm obviously riding one-handed. It's changing gear for me. As my cadence get faster, it's now in gear six. It's now in gear seven. Now in gear eight, this is crazy. I'm not doing anything. Get up the pace a little bit more. Gear eight, nine, not doing anything. Slow down to a stop. Gear four. I'd have to test it back to back with the Bosch race to see which is the punchiest. But it goes, it hauls ass. It's not hanging around. Here I'm going to show you how the gearbox works. I'm going to burn through it as quickly as I possibly can and try and really stress this system out. So gear four. Okay, between gear four and five, there is a bit more of a clunk. That explains why the default is gear five, because between four and five, a bit more of a clunk, a bit more abrupt. Between five, six, seven and eight, smooth as silk. It is incredibly smooth between gears five and eight. Five, six, seven, eight. I can barely feel that I've shifted. And as I slow down, automatically change in six, five, four. Eight, not changing gear. Slow down, seven, six, five, four. You get used to this. This is auto shift. I know Shimano have come out with an auto shift as well. Theirs uses the traditional derailleur and mech. This auto shift is all in that gearbox motor unit. It's one system and it works remarkably well. Look at this, look at how clean it is. It saves 800 grams of weight there. This weighs 4.1 kilos, so there's more weight there really down low. There's nothing hanging off. There's nothing to get bashed. There's nothing to smash and break and for you to be out of action. This is virtually maintenance free. I'd be interested to find out how often you need to change this belt or even if you need to change that belt at all. Pinion guys said it will last the lifetime of the bike and then some. Okay, next what I want to try is shifting it under load. So I'm going to try and like really burn through that gearbox and stress it out see how it goes right so i'm in the highest mode i'm going to shift manually under load i'm going to listen out for any crunches between gears eight and nine there is a slight clunk because it's like you've got a front chain ring and a rear derailleur it's shifting two at once so that one is a little bit more aggressive there you go did it there so there is a distinct clunk between eight and nine. Between nine and 12, it is completely seamless. It's like it's an electric car without any gearbox at all. Between 10, 11, 12, it is so, so smooth. You cannot tell you've shifted at all. Yeah, between eight and nine, there's a distinct clunk. And also between gears four and five, there is a clunk as well. There you go. That is more than what you'd feel on a traditional system, but the rest is smoother and silent. This is what technology is all about. Advancing things to make them simpler and easier to use. 
So we give four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Boy, this is insanely good. This is really a revolutionary product because. This is a version one, you know, this is going to change and evolve over the next few years, no doubt. What's this going to be like in five years time? This is, this is how I see things going. If you've got a motor and you can now integrate the gearbox in it and it's all electronic and it's all controlled via the built in control units powered off the single main battery. There's nothing else to charge. Okay. What about motor noise? Let's listen. Let's listen together. I've got the microphone on top of my camera about my ear level. I'm going to put it in the highest mode and I'm just in gear four. There is some noise there, isn't there? It's not silent. It's shifted automatically into gear seven. Now it's in gear eight. That is not distracting at all. Yeah, the lower down gears are definitely noisier between one, two, three and four. And then as it starts getting through into the harder gears, I'm in gear nine. Let's make sure I'm not above the cutoff. Gear nine. Hardly any noise at all. Needs to be tested properly, needs to be tested on a trail up a long climb, a thousand meter climb to really try and stress that motor out to find out how noisy it gets. But just in my quick initial testing, this is not the quietest motor in gears one, two, three, and four. There is a clunk between gears four and five, between gears five, six, seven, and eight, very, very smooth. And it gets quieter between gears eight and nine, there is another clunk and between gears nine, 10, 11, and 12, virtually smooth as silk and pretty silent. No noise, nothing. No chain slap, nothing, nothing slapping around at the back here at all. Gear 12, I'm above the limit. It is quite draggy, it feels above the limit, but it is always hard to tell on e-bikes because it is a fat Magic Mary. It looks like a super gravity, it's a purple one. Just look at this though, look at this belt. Requires no oil, no care or maintenance. Apparently people that have ridden this in mud and everything dust, just say that this is zero maintenance. You don't need to clean this, you don't need to lube it. It deals with lots of debris and dust and rocks and stuff really well. There's no maintenance on here. You only have to change the gearbox oil once every 10,000 kilometers or once a year. And that apparently takes 10 minutes to do. This is quiet as well. Just in my quick test, I've noticed there's no, there's no chain slap. There's no chain. There's nothing to slap around. This is taut with this tensioner just down here. Just look at that. It's beefy. It's built to last. There's no low hanging mech down here. These shifters are brilliant, easy to use, very, very familiar. Nice tactile feeling to them, clicky, but you actually push them to move a little bit. So it's not just like a button or a switch. Now I can't say I'm a massive fan of this display. It is a version one. I'd like to see what they can come up with in a version two or even a version three. It's a bit chunky. It's a bit e-bike old school looking. Serves a purpose. It works. It's functional. It's not the prettiest, but it's not the biggest issue at all because the rest of the stuff is super slick and well, you can't get more minimalist than that, can you? It really does seem like this is the future of electric mountain biking. This is just a first test. I need to try this more on some proper trails. I'm going to ask Simplon if I can get one of these bikes back in the UK to test it on the tracks I'm familiar with. But for now, this is so exciting and it's been an absolute pleasure to try this out at Eurobike.